Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Technical Test Analyst. We are in chapter 4 and continuing with the next topic that is reliability testing. Every topic you have a new level of testing to understand so just it's just going to be interesting to explore every time a new level. So let's talk a little more about reliability testing. To start with is first of all the introduction and measuring the software maturity is another part of the reliability. When you talk about reliability first of all it is more about like how reliable a particular software will be like when you try to uh, work on it and uh, put some data interact with some data and every time you see that it is being stable and responding to your queries from time to time no matter how longer or how often you visit that and it keeps on responding to you every time whenever you look for something and does not really say some time to you that you know oh, i'm not available right now or probably having a maintenance phase look at some of the examples like linkedin or gmail or google probably you wouldn't have seen a crash page ever or you wouldn't have seen a maintenance phase like any of the other banking services when they send you a text stating that okay we will be offline for this particular duration as we will be having a maintenance going on so we will be not active or this page cannot be used so this kind of thing does not happen in such things so when you talk about reliability is for those application to make sure that this is sustainable and it is available to you 24 by 7 and no matter what you do it will always keep responding to you but yes uh, it's really important to make sure that what if that thing actually crashes what if an application actually crash then how fast it can recover now let me come back to my own example when you talk about google and gmail i have personally experienced moments when gmail has crashed but the moment you try to refresh it again hardly a few seconds you actually get back the page again that means that's the way how reliable certain applications will be that the moment it crashes it can restore or recover from the crash as soon as possible within fractions of second and that is what reliability testing is all about so let's explore more it says that the iso 25010 uh, classification of product quality characteristics defines the following sub characteristics of reliability like maturity fault tolerance recoverability and uh, availability now of course maturity is all about how well the reliable the software is when you try to make use of it fault tolerance means the capability of the software product to maintain a specified level of performance in cases of software defects even if it occurs it tries to give you a range where you can actually fall under that and get back to this recoverability no matter if anything goes wrong we were just talking about the same thing and it is going to be recovering back automatically to resume the work Availability stands for the degree to which a component or system is operational and accessible when required for use. Like every time, 24 by 7 or maybe 9 to 6. So what is the availability of this product? The second part of it talks about measuring the software maturity. How can you measure? What is the maturity of your product? So an objective of reliability testing is to monitor a statistical measure of software maturity over time and compare this to a desired reliability goal which may be expressed as service level agreement. So you need to, if you are a non-functional tester, you already know what a service level agreement is, which includes a lot of such statistics which we need to measure during these non-functional parameters. The measures may take the form of a mean time between failure, like MTBF, mean time to repair, MTTR and any other kind of intensity measurement just like you know uh, making sure that the hits per second does not go beyond this throughput value is not less than this and you know there are a lot of such things which can be actually measured and if that all meets the expectation you actually call it as a maturity measurement so yes these are the common parameters which allows you to measure the maturity of a product which you are testing the next part is the fault tolerance testing. We just spoke about the fault tolerance and how exactly this can be measured. So obviously it evaluates the software tolerance to faults in terms of handling unexpected inputs. 
what if a user tries to put something which is not recommended by the product but still how far it can recommend you return in return that what should be the recommended input or trying to round off something so if you try to put a value like 250.03 then it automatically accepts 250 not just 03 as decimal values so yes these kind of values can be actually updated using the fault tolerance and this makes it more reliable that he or the product understands what a user is trying to mention and uh, tells or automatically evaluates the value which should be accepted by the product in order to minimize the effort required by the user. Another part of it is recoverability testing which is all about how fast it can recover. So we have actually two things here one is recovery and failover. Now when you say recovery it's like when user was working and it crashed on its own then how well and how fast it can recover. Whereas the same thing if done purposefully like you go into that particular node where you purposely put some pressure by having a different scenario and try to make it crash like it, it you want it to crash by applying that particular pressure at the right point and you try to test how, fell, how fast it can recover and how well it can recover is what you call it as failover. So recovery is on its own like if you were doing something it crashed and failover is you purposefully crash it. So let's see what more we have got in recoverability testing. Recoverability test includes failover and backup and restore. These are the three ways by which you can do it. Failover tests are performed where the consequences of a software failure are so negative that specific hardware or software measures have been implemented to ensure system operations even if the event of a failure. That means no matter if it fails, it will automatically recover. Typical preventive measures of hardware failures might be included as load balancing across several processors and clustering servers, processors or disk so that one can immediately take over from another if it should fail. So this is how we can prevent it. We're just having a multiple backups uh, in terms of like having an additional server or having additional processors so that if one crashes or cannot take the load the second one takes the remaining distributions of the load and then helps you to come back. Uh, the backup and restore test focus on the procedural measures set up to minimize the effects of a failure. Such test evaluates the procedures uh, for taking different form of backup and or for restoring that data if data loss or corruption should occur. So you, you know it from your basic operating system skills that your system automatically creates certain restore points that if in case your system crashes due to any reason then you have a point from where you can actually recover and restore those values or this point. So you create a backup point and these backups can be helpful in order to restore and recoverability or Reliability testing includes this part where you try to create certain points, uh, you create a backup and then try to see that if it crashes, can we restore that or not. Measures for backup and restore test may include the following. For example, time taken to perform different types of backup, like how long does it really take to do a backup? And then time taken to restore the data from that backup file, if it is recoverable or not. If it is recoverable, then whether you are able to recover everything or not. And then the levels of guaranteed data backup. So that backup is really important to be taken care into consideration when it comes to reliability testing. The next part of this talks about the availability. Again, one of the parameter which we saw in the beginning is availability. So how well it is available or throughout the clock and you know what parameters a user will be accessing around the clock in order to meet the expectations. So any system that has interfaces with other system or processes relies on the availability of those interfaces to ensure overall operability where availability testing serves the following principal purposes how where and where it will be helpful to establish whether required system components and processes are available and respond as expected to request. So it's, it always happens that when you try to uh, deal with a multi-layer or multi-tier applications which has a lot of web services in between or probably an APIs from different sources or maybe a third-party software or even if you talk about the courts like commercial of the self applications they are third-party provided APIs and interfaces which you integrate with your product. So another example is like booking.com 
Picking.com doesn't have anything of its own. It's just a medium to bring all the possible options to you from worldwide in order to help you get a hotel, bus, train, or maybe a flight. So you just have to feed in your information. It will connect to that particular vendor's website, uh, the owner website, and then gather the number of flights available for you at that point of time. So same way here. To provide measurements for which an overall level of availability can be obtained. To establish whether an overall system is ready for operation. So in everything, just making sure that this integration works well and it is available all the time when you try to integrate. Sometimes you don't see a response. It's not because the booking.com is not working. It's mainly because the other APIs may be not available at that point of time to interact with the uh, other organization flights. Availability testing is performed both before and after entering operational services and is particularly relevant for the following situation where systems are made up of other systems like the combination of multiple things, test focus on availability of the individual component system and where system or services is sourced externally. Again, the same example like third party applications or interfaces. So yeah. Putting it all together, availability all is all about making sure that what a user needs to interact with your product is always available. The next part of it, talking about the reliability test planning, how the planning of the reliability testing can be done and what kind of aspects should be considered when planning for reliability test. And that's really important for the technical test analyst to be aware of. Reliability can continue to be monitored after the software has entered production. The organization and staff responsible for operation of the software must be consulted when gathering reliability requirements for test planning purposes. So now we know that you know where exactly this can be performed, and even later than uh, you know after the old testing has been done, and even it moves to the production environment, some of the reliability testing can be performed. The technical test analyst must select a reliability growth model, which shows the expected levels of reliability over time. A reliability growth model can provide useful information to the test manager by enabling comparison of the expected and achieved reliability level. So that's one of the confirmation thing where you have your statistics with respect to expected and actual and this comparison result must be uh, provided to the test manager in order to make necessary decisions to continue further on terms of reliability testing execution. Reliability tests should be performed in a production-like environment. The environments used should remain as stable as possible to enable reliability trends to be monitored over time. Of course, reliability is all about making sure the application is sustainable and to do that, to test it, still you need to make sure that the product is stable. Thus, you always try to test that and make sure that it is stable during those tests. And at the same time, you need to make sure that you are in a real-time environment in order to test the reliability. Because reliability tests often require use of entire system, reliability is most commonly done as a part of system testing. So I think you know when you talk about the non-functional parameters, uh, most of them are practically executed or interacted for the real-world schedules after the system testing itself. The reason is system testing confirms that the product is now functionally ready in order to be enhancing the non-functional parameters. In order to produce test results that are statistically significant, reliability test usually requires long execution times. You know, whenever it comes to stability, you need to have a prolonged period of time to interact with the product in order to make sure that at any point after 20 hours or maybe 10 hours or maybe 15 hours, does it really crashes. And if it crashes, you again get into the second part of it, that is recovery, backup and restore kind of things. One last thing is talking about the test specification. How do you derive the test cases for reliability? What is your test basis and so on? Reliability testing may take the form of a repeated set of predetermined tests. These may be tested, uh, selected at random form of a pool or test case generated by a statistical model using random or pseudo-random methods. Tests may also be based on pattern of use which are sometimes referred to as operational profile. So mainly it is like exploratory approach where you generally try to have a random 
test case being picked up from the functional side as well or the non-functional side and have different scenarios being executed randomly and try to see that if the system actually is reliable or does it crash at any kind of scenarios. Where reliability tests are scheduled to run automatically in parallel to normal operations, they are generally specified to be as simple as possible uh, to avoid possible negative impact on the system performance efficiency. Yeah, do make sure that nothing what you create has any kind of contradiction with any other parameters which you are covering as a part of your testing. Certain reliability tests may specify that memory intensive actions uh, be executed repeatedly so that possible memory leaks can be detected. So yes, a lot of non-functional parameters can actually help you to detect uh, other parameters input like memory leak is another common thing which is uh, helpful in many of the factors of the non-functional parameters. So yes, reliability is another one which will help you to determine much earlier or probably at later environments as well that you know there are some constraints which might impact your reliability feature of the product. So anyways, uh, just making a little longer videos these days. The reason is that I want you to give entire understanding of each level instead of making it into two parts. So if you listen it together, then you understand everything in one go. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else beyond this, feel free to comment below. I'll be there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring and keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.